nothing. thing is on, that means it's on. Okay. <laughs> and it is now red. So you're on. We're on. Let's and go. And action. We're on. We're on. Today we're trying something a little bit different. As I was walking the other day, I thought, well, what happens if you layer and you layer and you layer? For me, when I'm spraying literally at once, and there was, um, I will admit, some pouting that went on when we were trying oh, this yesterday. Oh my God. And sometimes, well, and this is, see, this is the thing that I try to be cautious about. I don't ever want you to think that I do things right the very first time I do them, because that's pretty rare. The other thing is that sometimes Barb calls me on these walks and I get this, oh, well, oh, I have an idea. Oh, oh. I'm That's always fun. Hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm heavy breathing in her ear. Uh -huh. But also it is important to know that when we show you videos, we have already um, worked out the technique for sometimes hours beforehand. Um, and sometimes we have ideas that don't work or they don't work the first time. So you are not alone if you make a bunch of lousy attempts at whether it's spraying through the stencil or gel printing before you get You're good results. Company. So yeah. yeah, we get the same thing until we figure it out. So and poly faces happen sometimes. This is true. <laughs> Let's go show them how we did it. Let's go do it. So a few moments ago, we told you about kind of the genesis for this layers upon layers upon layers technique. Um, I'm gonna do it with sprays and Elizabeth is gonna show you her kind of process for mimicking this on the gel plate. When you talk about this, the first thing that I want to mention is you'll notice that this is a pretty small stencil design. One of the things that I've discovered as I played is that, especially for this first layer, you really need something that is contrasting in size to whatever your mask, masks are going to be. The more I played and I was you know, figuring out try, why this wasn't working the way that I imagined, it finally dawned on me that you've got to have that size differential so that you can actually see what's going on here. And then the other piece of that is you need some contrast in the color, which also helps. Now, when you look at this, this is pretty easy. Your eye fills this in, even though this is a bigger stencil, because this is uncolored and you're, like I said, and plus I've outlined it with a pen. So this is easier to see. I'm gonna show you, the first option I'm gonna show you is how you can put some color on and then do this process. So this one is just lay the masks down in whatever arrangement you want, lay the stencil on top and then spray. And when you pick it up, this is what you get. But interestingly enough, as I said, you can put some color down first. Now I'm just gonna mop the color up to try to dry it with a, um, a piece of paper towel to speed this along. So let me slide this out of the way for one second. I'm using a couple of different things today. I have some of the Sampool Cosmic Shimmer Botanical Sprays. And at the ready, I also have some of Tim's Distress Mica Stains. I have no idea which ones I'm gonna end up with, but this is kind of what my options are at the moment. The other thing that I found too, is that if you start off light you're, and you get darker is when you get more of this color contrast, which is so important in seeing this. So I'm just gonna start out, this is the one that is named, I'm looking for the yellow version here, and of course that's the last one I picked up out of three, and this one is named Lemon Peel. So all I wanna do is put a very light layer on here so that I have some lemon, or some lemon, I have some yellow. <laughs> ah, it's good to be me. I'm just gonna mop this up because I don't want necessarily want mixing of colors if I come in with something that makes mud. So the other thing that I want to do is get most of the dampness off of here. This is going to curl. Now, when I demo on the Yasutomo rice paper, it lays a little bit more flat, but these will curl a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, these are from, and I don't remember which of them, but there are five Matisse stencil mask combos in Elizabeth's line. And these happen to be the ones that are big fronds like this. So if I lay this down like this, and I come in and I'm gonna use, again, I've chosen, not this one, but I've chosen designs. So this is from, this is named Florals and it's from Patterns for Layering 2. This is, oops, this is named Halftone, which is from the Dorothy collection, which precedes this by a good six months, precedes Patterns for Layering. And this is another from Patterns for Layering that's called Daisies. I'm gonna use this because it happens to be the last one left in my hand. So I'm going to grab Oh, I don't know. What, what do we got here? We got green. Green and yellow work. So this is a mica stain that's named Tree Lot. 
and hopefully when I take this cover off and I shake this up, the mister is not clogged. I try to be really careful and I spritz them after I'm done to keep them clean, but they do, ah, oh, there we go. As I say, they do occasionally clog up. So I'm gonna grab, again, I'm gonna just rinse that out so that it sits over there and hopefully doesn't dry. Now, if I lift this up, so you can see the pattern on the background, which is what I was looking for, but more importantly, well, I need something to lift this. I don't have a palette knife handy. But as I lift this up, you can see what's going on underneath. Now, the way to really make that stand out is to come back the, with these, once they're dry, lay them back down there and you can trace around them or you can sketch around them. So you can see that again, it's a little harder to see. The smaller the pattern, the bigger this effect is going to be. But if I were to put this back on here and I trace around it, then you will definitely see that pattern. All right, so let's move. You know what, I need to wipe these off because I'm probably gonna use them again. All right, let's put that over there and get it out of the way. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on a piece of the Asatomo rice paper. And I'm going to do basically the same thing, but this time I'm gonna come in with the halftone stencil because the, these are only, I think, quarter inch dots. And so this is an even tighter pattern and it works really well. So what I'm gonna do, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna spray through this. Let's pick this pretty green color. This is named Eucalyptus Leaves. So I'm gonna spray this on here which is, it's kind of a teal turquoisey color. It leans more toward the blue green than it does a green green. And I don't have to worry about this moving, which is nice because the stencil is holding it down at this point. And I'm gonna come in and I'm going to do the same thing. But this time, let's find another one. This time I'm gonna choose, I think there's a purpley color here I have. This one is named, I think it's Anemone. I think. So this is kind of a purple color. And again, with the, the turquoise-ish in the purple, I'm not gonna get a muddy mess. But the thing that you're gonna see here, first of all, is that yes, this does work, but because I have such tiny openings in these stencils and as small as the other one was, it really does make a big difference. So when I lift this up, you can see that now I've got those very definite leaf shapes going on. Um, I can outline them, as I said a moment ago, or you can leave them alone. That really is up to you. But when you start to take layers and layers and layers and put them together, sometimes you fail. I can tell you that when I was playing with this, I failed several times and I had to walk away from it because I failed and I needed a break from it. But I came back and I kind of figured out where I needed to go with this. And truly, the size of the openings in the stencil are what really does make quite a difference. Okay, so Barb had fabulous results with her sprays. I hope I can follow that act. <laughs> um, I am uh, working on my Yasutomo sketch rice paper. I love this paper for gel printing. I can't say that enough. It has a smooth side that is facing up towards you in the pad, and it has a rough side on the back. It's the smooth side that you want to put down on the gel plate, and when you do, it generally will pull all of the paint off and it is great for collage, which is what I use my papers for because it is highly absorbent and it glues down nice and flat. So this is a 48 sheet nine by 12 pad and um, I just love it. So anyway. Well, the good news is most of the time we have it on sale. Most of the time Joggles has it on sale and Barb keeps it in stock because she knows I like it and she knows you like it, my people, my peeps. That's right. Right? So, okay. So I am going to be using the first, uh, the, the bottom pattern that I'm going to be using is patterns for layering two um, and, the, and it's called florals. The stencil is called florals. So this is a shimmery sample that Barb made with it, which is a lot more fun than showing you the mylar itself. <laughs> <laughs> a little more impressive. A little more impressive. So um, please uh, ignore my filthy gel plate. I've tried to clean it for you, but I, for some reason, decided to try black paint on it the other day, which was a disaster and is still continuing to be a disaster, But, which is why I don't hardly ever use black. So, um, so florals and the layering and the creating of patterns within patterns, I am gonna gel print something similar uh, to the effect that Barb created. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a light colored solid base layer. And I am working with the Klimt 
freeform masks. So I've got a series of the Klimt freeform masks and because it's Klimt, I am using metallic paint. So my base layer that I'm gonna work on is going to be gold. So we're gonna put that out and cross our fingers that that black doesn't mix in with it. Otherwise we're gonna have mud. It's looking good. So far so good. It's almost like the plate is stained, which you know is annoying, but it's not gonna affect what you put on it if that's all it really is. Yeah, this is a good teaching moment opportunity. If you stain your plate and um, it bugs you, even though it doesn't transfer in the prints, but it bugs you to look at it, um, you can clean it with baby oil that will take a stain off of it. If you get Posca paint, pen stain, or any kind of stain on that plate, the baby oil uh, tends to get those things off that other cleaning processes don't. So this is my gold base layer. Sometimes gold, and good, good thing, no black. Sometimes if your gold comes up uh, slightly not dark enough, I'll just print another layer of gold on top of it. I was having that issue yesterday with the very, very pale gold. It wasn't quite solid enough. So I just did two layers, but this one worked just fine. So yeah, if, you're, if your gold doesn't work perfectly, just print it a second time. But that's just, that's where we want to be. So then I'm going to take copper. And now I'm going to add that patterns for layering to stencil pattern to the base layer. We so, can tell you've been using lots of metallics. The tubes are getting low. Yeah, they're brand new. We just Barb ordered them and had them sent here and then uh, from the Joggles warehouse and then I used them all. all right. <laughs> there are certain things that demand metallics. Well, and Klimt is definitely one of them. Indeed. So here's our copper. Just because you said that, I'm gonna put more Go copper out right. there, right? Let's We're gonna squeeze, squeeze out the there. rest of this tube. I love, as much as I love the gold with the Klimt, the copper is just beautiful because it has sort of a pink tint to it, right? Yeah. Well, and then you combine copper with purple and it's just so awesome. It is. All right, so here comes the florals, a small pattern. That's the thing that Barb figured out and I, you know, was happy to learn from her experimentation. A small pattern, a patterns for layering type of pattern is what you want. We have two series of patterns for layering and we have the Dorothy series, uh, which was where the dots, the dot pattern that Barb used came from. So you want it to be a small pattern on the base layer, for me anyway. Okay, so I shifted this a little bit while I was rubbing it. I should have been using my Baron, Barb. Ooh, you are in so much trouble. It's okay. Who knows, you may find something marvelous happens with that shift. Yeah, yeah, it just it just came out of register a little bit, but it still created the pattern. But the paper slipped a little bit because I was rubbing it and talking. Um, and so sometimes the barren is nice, especially in the winter when your hands are dry and you're rubbing that rough side of the paper. Okay, so it's a little it's a little out of register, but it's still pretty cool. You have a dense, busy that. background. That's what we're looking for. Oh, so yeah, day, I mean, it's in line here, but then it's 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 actually better. Look at this is a, 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 happy, a happy mistake. Happy mistake. Yes. So now I've got a ghost print down here. I'm not going to use that. So I'm just going to spritz it with a little water and wipe it off with a paper towel. If I had another sheet of um, print going on here, I could make a second print. But we're being economical with time today. Yeah. So. I just, all you just spritz a little water, uh, use a paper towel. I don't have to get this perfectly clean because I am now gonna go to a dark color of purple. So it's not gonna really. Uh, Are you really gonna go with purple? Yeah. I just threw that out there as a thing. Yeah, I, didn't I had realize. the purple out right oh, here. Look at you. Okay, so now this is the part of this process that I messed up more times than not. <laughs> well, also, we'd like to tell you that it doesn't always work the first time for us either. Mm -mm. So now you have to really get this metallic off the brayer because if the metallic gets into the purple, it's going to change the color of it and it's going to change the opacity of it. And this purple is a translucent color. That's important. It's dark, but it's translucent. Metallic is opaque. If we mix, somehow blend the copper into the purple, we're gonna create something that's more opaque. Generally, I have two brayers, but the other one is making so much squeaky noise that we decided 
side, we would spare you that. So I'm just rolling this off on a sheet of paper off to the side until it doesn't transfer any more paint. And I think we're good. But I like to have two brayers because sometimes you, you'll still get a little bit of paint from the edges that will turn up in there because it's hard to roll these off. And, you know, in the time that you shift, the first brayer dries. All right, so here we go. We don't have any copper in that. That's good. We're going to put the purple out. And again, that's a translucent color. That means we're going to see some of this through it. So now I'm going to have fun with these freeform masks in that I can lay them over each other and I can arrange them how I want them. So unlike a, a standard mask that's in a square, these loose pieces, just like the Matisse pieces that Barb used, you can arrange them however you want them. And I'm going to overlap them. That's something that you don't really do very often. And that's our layers upon layers upon layers. And this is the la where the layers become upon layers. Mm -hmm. So I know that you are probably inclined to just lay them out, and I was too, but I had a lot of fun overlapping these and bringing in a lot of the pieces of the Klimt patterns for layering and crisscrossing them in a, in a way that's a little bit mindful so that you don't clog up the spirals with another big chunky like if I put this right through the spiral, that would kind of mess up the spiral. But if I put it, if I overlap it over here, so you just have to play to get good at the overlapping. But this is our layers upon layers. So I'm gonna go through here. And we're working with heavy body acrylic, so that gives you a little bit more time, but you don't wanna take forever so that the paint's dry and then you're sad. We don't want any sad faces, Barb. No, we do not. You and I had sad faces last night. That was enough. We did. We had sad faces because a lot of the things we were trying to do were not working out. Okay, so the metallic is now going to go over the multi-layered purple. And when these layers um, of mask, freeform masks overlap a bit, they are going to require a little bit more pressure. So I'm using my Speedball Red Baron, a tool that I used to say I would never embrace. Barb is always happy to hear me say that. Yeah, I, I have to say I really like it, but I still like using my fingertips because in the middle of these spirals... Yeah, you're not going to get that with, a bright, with you, the Baron. I mean, your fingers cannot be replaced from that perspective. Yeah, so you want to add that pressure. Okay, so now because we have layers of upon layers of the um, masks, we're not going to dismount the paper right away. We're going to check it. So, oh, look at that. Oh, that is pretty awesome. So we're going to pull it up, and then we're going to check and see if there's more detail we can get by adding a little more fingertip pressure, especially in the middle of the spirals. So I'm looking at this one, and I'm seeing there's more paint there, and I could get more detail there. So when I put it down, look at that. I really get much better detail. Also probably here where they're overlapping. So let's press in there a little bit more and get a little bit more detail. So don't just pull the paper off right away. Have a peek and apply more fingertip pressure, especially in the areas that are overlapping. And I think that's good. I think that's awesome. So here you have a beautiful print with pattern in the clipped shapes and with the purple on the outside. And if you tip it, you do see a little bit of the, pur uh, the metallic showing through the purple, but I went kind of heavy with the purple so that we would really get a strong sense of these shapes. So that is the layers upon layers of Klimt Freeform masks with the patterns for layering floral that shows up then inside of those shapes. We did good. We did great. Okay, so anyway, that's it. Um, we had a great time. Uh, we, we have, uh, we have social plans this afternoon. We do. So we're just saying goodbye. Goodbye. See you next time.